There are literally hundreds of different shafts on the market, all promising to do things slightly different for one another. In this video, I'm going to take two popular options at slightly different specifications and see if they actually do make all that much difference. Let's get testing and find out if they do. The two shafts that I'm going to be using in this test are the Hazardous Smoke RDX and the Mitsubishi Chemical Tensai AV Series Blue. The Hazardous Smoke is a stiff flex and it has a low launch and low spin profile. And the Tensai AV Blue is a regular flex, has a mid launch and a low spin profile. Now let's hit some balls, collect some data, see if we can differentiate between these two shafts and see if they actually do what they say on the tin. Right, let's go with the Tensai Blue first. This is a mid-launch shaft and it's regular flex as well. So I'd be expecting the ball to launch maybe a little bit higher, slightly higher peak height than the Hazardous. Let's see if that does happen and let's see if there's any noticeable difference with regards to distance, etc. So let's take a look at the average data for the Tensai Blue. We've got a launch angle of 11.8 degrees, we've got an overall peak height of 112 feet, we've got a spin rate of 2704 RPM, a ball speed of 161. Now the carry distance, 295. Pretty happy with that. This shot was actually downhill. Total distance of 321. Now the launch angle is probably just a little bit lower than what I was expecting. Peak height in and around where I was expecting it to be. Now it's the turn of the Hazardous Smoke RDX. Now this shaft is lower launch apparently, so we should see a little bit of a lower launch characteristic with this club. The settings, by the way, in this TSI2 are exactly the same for both shafts. And this is a stiffer flex as well. So again, that would probably enhance that lower launch. It may have a, an effect on the actual dispersion of the shots as well. It may even make a difference to the overall performance of the ball with regards to distance.
Now let's take a look at the data set from the Hazardous Smoke RDX. We've got a launch angle of 12.5 degrees, we've got a peak height of 118 feet, we've got a spin rate of 2741, ball speed 161, we've got a carry distance of 303 yards, and we've got a total distance of 331. Now let's take a look at the shot plots and the data side by side. Now the Hazardous Smoke is going a little bit further, it's going 303 yards carry versus 295 carry from the Tensai Blue. We've got a total distance from the Hazardous of 331, 321 for the Tensai. Now I have at hand the raw data from the flight scope machine which was showing that these two drivers were going exactly the same distance, both carry and total yardage, but of course I do testing out on the golf course, so some of these shots were getting slightly different bounces to one another, so it shows that differences in yardage on the course can come from the actual terrain and the conditions, not just from the actual player input. The information that I'm really interested in is the spin rate, peak height and launch angle characteristics of these two shafts, and they're actually the other way around than what I was expecting. And it just goes to show that user input, me, can actually blur the lines between these two shafts and they actually can cross over and start performing slightly differently than what you would expect them to. Something that I am aware of though is the dispersion is a little bit tighter with the 10 side blue and this is the second test in a row that uh, that has happened. So I'm looking to maybe do some really in-depth testing over the next week or two to see if that actually continues. Is one of these shafts more accurate for me than the other one? So as we can see, in that particular test, there wasn't really anything to separate these two shafts. They were actually slightly the other way around from what I was expecting them to be. But again, that's probably user input as opposed to the specification of the shaft. So it just goes to show that the forces through the handle that I'm applying to the club have a lot more to do with things than the actual specification of the shaft. But that's not to say that we should completely disregard shaft specification when it comes to performance. If you were to get a really ill-fitted shaft, it's definitely going to have a negative effect. And even the feel of the shaft as well. It could be the perfect specification on paper, but if it doesn't feel quite right, it might just not work. So shafts are certainly something to consider, even if it is just down to feel. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I've really enjoyed making it. And I'd love to hear any experiences that you've had with regards to shaft fitting. Do you really think the shaft makes that much difference? Please like and share the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. You know where the red button is. I'll see you all again soon. Take care.